Jared Poland, Frono's Photo. Dot com and I have another challenge video where I challenged myself to shoot an entire concert with the iPhone 8 Plus. Now we filmed this a couple months ago so that's why I wasn't using the iPhone 10 just yet. It wasn't out. But what was interesting is when I got to the Gavin DeGraw concert, I was going to the pit and one of the people in the front row goes, are you gonna post these on Instagram later? And I was like, hmm. I have this new phone, why don't I shoot this phone at the concert? So that's exactly what I did. So what you're gonna get to see in just a few seconds is the first person shooter angle because I use the new screen capturing option inside of iOS whatever, 11 if that's what it is, which lets you see exactly what I'm doing. So you're seeing a live video as I'm shooting photos and then we cut the photos in along with commentary for me about what's going on. So I hope you enjoy this video Video. This is a cool little challenge. Let me know what you think down in the comments below, but here it is, Dan, roll it up and let's get to the photos. So here we go. The first thing that I wanted to do is give you a screen recording so you could see exactly what I'm doing as I'm doing it. Launch the photo app, the native photo app, and just start taking pictures. So the pictures that you're seeing pop up right now are straight out of the camera with no edits done. Some of the ones that you will see later from another program are all edited. Now my goal right off the rip is just to try and get some interesting shots and see how the camera is going to work in this situation. And as you can see that that's clearly out of focus uh, you can watch as I tap around the screen to lock the focus or more so get the focus where I want it and as I'm sliding the slider that's how you can control the brightness or the darkness overexposed underexposed basically and that one's obviously under but one thing I noticed with the native app which may not be an issue for most people just everyday shooting is that when I move the focusing point or refine somewhere else it change the exposure. I couldn't lock it in the way that I wanted to lock it. Now the focus on some of them is actually pretty good. It's not as bad as I expected it to be, but it did work out pretty well. Are they going to be photos that you can blow up to the size of walls? Probably not, uh, but you're also noticing that you get to see as I go vertical and horizontal as I'm switching. And with a drummer, I'm trying to get the stick in the right place. So I'm sometimes right before the downbeat's gonna happen, I'm taking the picture like this. You get the blur of the stick, but he's still in focus. It also doesn't hurt to have the 2X zoom with the 8 Plus. But yeah, you see that right there, how it jumped exposure, and then I have to take the time and slide it all back. That becomes a pain in the butt. You'll also notice that at the top, I've got the live photos options on. Now that's actually pretty cool that Apple offers that. You can go about a second or so before and a second or so after and then find the exact moment that you want to keep and make that the photo that you get to see when it saves it. Now, I'm still looking to get to capture the moment the way that I want to capture it. I'm still looking for good images. That's why you see me get shaky and then stable. Right when I'm about to shoot, you'll see that the camera will settle down and get nice and stable. And also, I noticed that if I rested my elbows against the low stage, the vibrations would go through my elbows and then right through the camera which would cause the the image not to look great so what you saw there is i was just stopping the recording to make sure it worked and it did and then started it right back up now with the color change i love the different colors i, I wish i could get better angles and better frames but it's not that easy when you just have the iPhone. Also, you won't notice that I'm, I'm never pinching or going past the, the 2x zoom into digital zoom. I do not want to do that at all. And being that I don't have control over the exposure here is I'm running into blown out hot spots. And again, every time I'm making a change, it's not I don't have much control over the image as the lights change. I've got to I've got to slide everything down the exposure and you can see the issues that you have. And here I'm just trying to find a better angle. Um, that's a little better. And it's also tough to see focus as you're doing this. I'm constantly tapping on the screen where I want it. I could lock focus in if I just hold my finger down. But you, you get the point with this is is that it's pretty difficult with the native app for the Oh, That's actually a good one. Look at that. Wasn't a great facial expression, but the exposure was much better. And it doesn't it doesn't help that he's wearing a hat. And what you want to get is his face exposed better. So you got to wait till he looks up or stands. Up. Yeah, see, that's better, but not a good captured moment. But I could go into the live photo and try to get that um, exact moment better. Again, as you see, as, he, as he's changing this up, the issue is every time I change the focus point or the lights change, 
I have to go back in and pull the exposure down or move the exposure up, and that makes for a big deal. Dan, let's pause it right here. Uh, let's skip. Let's skip forward to the part where I switch into the uh, Lightroom mobile app. All right, so we jump out of the native camera app to launch Lightroom Mobile, which is free, so you can download that. There, there's some quirks to it, like when I want to get to the camera real quick, it's not always where I want it. You also notice that I'm switching into professional mode and obviously making the screen brighter so that I can see it when I'm shooting in the dark. Now, when you first go into pro mode, it's leaving everything still set to auto, which already looks a hell of a lot better than the native app, but I want to go in here and make some extra tweaks so that I can lock in my exposure, unlike with the I, the, the, the camera app, uh, and make some tweaks here. Now, the first thing that I tweaked there was the ISO, because you want to get it lower, because this sensor is super duper small. The higher the ISO, the more noise, the more grain you're going to introduce. So I'm going around to check where my exposure is and just tweaking it from there. So ISO 160, uh, I'm at 1 40th of a second and I'm tweaking trying to find the best place because I don't want the motion blur. 1 40th would be probably giving me some blur. 1 80th, 1 100th may work. You can also see that you can still, you're shoot, I'm shooting raw now. I'm shooting DNG instead of just JPEGs that are fully compressed uh, out of the camera. These are all edited in Lightroom after the fact. Actually, I edited them in the new Lightroom, uh, which is the, the lighter version, the Lightroom, Adobe Lightroom is what they call it. Um, you can already see how much better these images look than the ones taken and compressed right out of the native app. So I can focus on shooting now, trying to get the focus where I want it. Oh, obviously missed the shot there because he turned his head, but I'm constantly moving my, oh, those are, oh boy, I'm so good. This is so good. Now they're just so much better. Can you see how the, the color is just better? The, cause now I can focus on capturing the moment without having to worry about my exposure so much. And that's why getting into this app helps. And obviously shooting raw in this situation helps if you're going to be in a concert situation. My goal here was to show you guys, oh, see, waited for him to move to get some action because he's not going to be doing too much more than playing the piano like I said earlier and so that gave me a good opportunity to get a nice shot there but once you get your framing down and, and you get used to getting the exposure or no sorry yeah the exposure you want where you want it but where you can focus on getting the focus where you want it and your composition because you're not worrying about making the other changes you're much better off um and the point here isn't to tell you to not use the native app that Apple has because it's great for snapshots, but you don't have control over the processing. You don't have control over the noise reduction that makes everything look smooth and, and just terrible. I rather see the noise but have a sharper image, a sharper image than worry about the way that the, the, the native app was doing it. But see, look at the colors. It actually is much better even with that backlight if i left this on auto mode in the app it would have been exposing for the light up there the green light that's super duper bright and being able to save the file in black and white is i say save the file because it changes it up and makes it work oh oh here's here's what i'm doing and i do this when i'm shooting with a dslr all the time right there i was trying to line up his head to block the light that was in the background but it moved and i wasn't quick enough at that point uh, because that makes for a really cool um, glow around his head. Now I'm moving situations, that's why the lights just went out. Finding the verticals, finding the horizontals, trying to get it again. I probably would zoom in. Yep, I figured right there was a good time to zoom in as I was seeing it, and I had to get low enough. Eh, e there it is. Close, close. Let's see, there it is again. Shoot the damn picture already, Jared. I'm seeing it right here. There you go. But see, it's not really, it's not a great shot because it's a, it's a profile. That's not so good, but the exposure's better. The file's much cleaner. Uh, I, I'm happy with the settings here, and you'll see that the auto white balance was set to auto. There you go. That's a Gavin DeGraw look. That's what he tends to look like um, when you capture a good, a good singing moment. Now, again, these aren't the greatest photos since sliced bread. I want you guys to know that, but I'm giving you a look at what it's like to be in the pit and have all access to get the shots um, even though he's not moving around too much, so I had a lot of time to, to tweak my settings to get to where I needed to go. Um, so yeah, it's just a lot of the same. Just trying to find the best images after all, trying to find different angles, seeing what I can tweak, seeing what I can change. Um, and so that's really my recommendations right there, is that uh, try setting the exposure where you want it, 
check the image in Lightroom if you have a second to see if you're, you're freezing the motion as well as you can, and then start going to town on shooting and worry about processing those DNGs and RAW files later. Oh, see, that's good. Those were good. The black and white was good. The color was good. That Those are the moments that you're trying to capture. If you can come out of here with three to five keepers, th I think that's a winning thing because how many shots of him playing the piano do you really need? Um, yeah, so so I'm pretty happy. Oh, oh, look, we got some action. Crotch shot, crotch shot. I'm sure he's gonna like that one. Nah, but I got wider. Um, you can see how still I am when I shoot. Even when I shoot with the DSLR, you'll see some motion shake. You'll see it when I do the first person shooter project, and then I get super still as the image locks in. Like, watch, super still. That's because it's a frozen frame because Dan popped it up on the screen. But again, what I'm running into is the hat. There you go. The hat not blocking the light. Um, when he looks up, it's much better. But here, if I lose his eyes, there's really nothing I can do. And a good recommendation when you're shooting a show, no matter what you're shooting with, is make sure you don't get the mic in the mouth. There, the mic is away from the mouth. Here, the mic's in the mouth. That's a terrible photo. Jared, you suck. All right? So that's not a good shot. Uh, but then he moves back in. I get a little closer because, again, I'm not doing any other zooming other than the wide angle and the telephoto that's built in. Because if you start pinching to zoom and do digital zoom, it's going to take away the quality and you're not going to be happy with the results. But I like this angle because I'm not having the mic right in his mouth. The color's terrible. There's nothing I can do about that because that's the color that's on him right now. Ooh, look, that was Randy Johnson. Just like uh, just posted a new photo. Go follow Randy Johnson, uh, the, the ex-baseball player. He's great. Great pitcher. He's, a, he's also a photographer there. See, as he smiled, I shot. So you're looking for those moments where he makes those changes. Wow, lots of bouncing around from zooming in and zooming out. Oh, I'm tweaking my exposure again. Dropped uh, ISO 400. That's going to introduce some noise and grain. See, that's not as clean as it was earlier. And I couldn't tell this when I was shooting. Uh, obviously, when you're shooting, it's not as easy to see the quality that you're going to be able to pull out of the file. But what I wanted to make sure is that when I shot earlier, slower shutter speed, lower ISO, I wanted to make sure that I was going to get some keepers no matter what, that if the, the 1 80th of a second wasn't fast enough, because I couldn't sit there and tweak the files while he's playing, because then I'm going to be missing the shots. Uh, but if you do have more time, it's good to take a couple of test shots to see what works in the lower light situations. But I'm pretty amazed that you can pull out files, raw files like this. See, that's no good. The quality's not as good at that setting as it was before. Did I just switch back into auto? Look at that. I'm back into auto. So I... Basically, what I'm doing is running tests to see what's going to work better if I leave it in full auto or if I go into manual. And I'll tell you that the manual is going to be much better. Um, but right here, he doesn't have a lot of light on him. So the wide angle's too far away. That's why you see me popping in and popping out to see what would work. Yeah, the vertical is not good. Doesn't fill the frame. The horizontal in this case is better. But again, how good of a shot could this possibly be? They're, they're not really good. But you, you can just look at the moments I'm trying to capture. Like, I'm not going to shoot when he's back there. But, uh, yeah, I'm not even shooting because I know that they're going to be not going to be great photos. Walk back through the pit. Super low stage. Get down low so I don't block people behind me. Back to Gavin playing the piano um, in full auto here. Oh, here we go. Changing the exposure. And what's cool is you can change it as you're going. So drop the ISO. How high am I going to go? I'm back to 400. 1 3 20th of a second to see that the exposure... Now I'm really going to freeze the motion at 400 ISO and 1 3 20th of a second. Uh, let's see. What do we what do we have coming here? Just just waiting. A lot of this is waiting. See, he's going to move his head, and I know I'm going to... Eh, nope, no good. Shot's no good. But you can see how much extra noise there is at 400 than there was earlier when we were at a lower ISO. Here's that light. That light's rotating, so I'm like, come on, light. Rotate. Get brighter. and And it didn't. But in black and white, it still worked. Um, but again, same images over and over. That's why I like to talk about if you could get three to five images to work out, then then you've done a good job. All right, so we pop back in to the, the regular camera app to take some photos. And I went right to 2x trying to get the best angle. But you can see right off the rip, I'm playing with the exposure. Because I have to make all those changes every time I take a picture almost. It's going to happen. So I'm just looking for those images. The same thing, as I said earlier, is that there's a lot of the same thing that's going to happen here. What I did is I switched back into the uh, the Lightroom mobile because it's just so much easier to lock your exposure in and then just worry about focus and shooting. The black and white, this is actually pretty good. I like the way that that one turned out. Um, 
a little noisy, but again, I don't worry about the noise and the grain, especially when you're shooting with an iPhone at a concert. Um, yeah, there's the light. Yeah, oh, oh, yep. Come on, Jared. You got to be quicker than that. Um, oh, that's that's pretty good. They look pretty good from, you know, not as good as a DSLR, but pretty useful, I think. So here's just trying to find the angle to get that wider shot as he's switching in between songs. Uh, now I'm at ISO 250th. Uh, ISO 250, 1 320th of a second. That's to give me, oh, I'm tweaking, I'm tweaking, 1 640. Yeah, I guess as the light changes, I, I, see, this is what's cool about being able to look through the phone or see everything that I'm doing is that you can see as I'm changing the exposure what's happening. Uh, and what's good is I believe with the iPhone 8 Plus is that you have the same aperture with both of the lenses, uh, the wide angle and the telephoto. That one's a little burnt out. Uh, didn't work as well. So 1 250th at 250 ISO. You can see I'm, I'm tweaking around each of the different sections that I'm doing to, to hopefully guarantee myself at least a couple of good photos. Um, and also, I don't want to bother Gavin. I mean, I know they were watching and they know that I'm there taking the photos, which they talked about after the show, but it really wasn't distracting. The drummer was trying to say, well, I was trying to figure out what the hell you were doing with your phone. Not that it was a bad thing, but he, he, he's interested in, he was like, I want to see what you did. That's what I'm interested in seeing. Oh, it looks like I just missed a good shot of him smiling. That could have been good. See, this is the same boring stuff. I don't have the whole piano in there. Yeah, that's why you see me jumping around, um, going horizontal. Ah, much lower angle because I just saw the stage show up in the image and I didn't want it in there. But again, oh, nope, no good. I, I shot because I saw movement and that movement equaled him playing with his uh, monitor in his ear. And again, same shot over and over. Bear with me as we move through these. Ooh, see, that's much better color. Look how good that looks when you can tweak the RAW file. When you have full control over everything when you're shooting RAW, th that's kind of the point here. The point was to really make the differences between using the camera app and then taking the time and using something like Lightroom Mobile that lets you shoot RAW and then tweaking it after the fact. And I said it before, if you're just taking quick snapshots to send to your friends or whatever you're going to do, we all do that. We all use the camera app. But when you have more control, more time, you, oh, yeah, see, this is what, ah, uh, yes. Yeah, well, that one was blurry, but that's great right there. We finally got a great shot that I would consider a very good shot um, with the, the way the lights were going in the background, with the way that, uh, the, the exposure was right on. Oh, I would sped it up a little bit to 1 3 20th, but that was good. Jared, why don't I do more of those? I think the answer to why I didn't do more of those is because I already got the good shots and I didn't need to try and kill it, even though I'm sitting here trying to kill. Oh, that's pretty good. Look at that. See, the light f fell in perfectly well the way that I needed to fall in. So I think we can uh, probably move ahead, Dan. It's just going to be more of the same. So uh, we'll, we'll jump ahead to another section. So I went ahead and skipped a bunch of stuff, same shots over and over. You guys don't need to see that and hear the same thing because really it's me trying to find that shot. That's why I'm shooting the way that I'm shooting. I'm trying to find those three to five to seven keeper shots that are going to make for the best images from the night. See, as he tilted his head back, I was trying to capture that. That's what I was, yep, smile, smile, shoot. Thank you. Thank you, Jared. You shot at the right time. See, that's what you can learn from this is watching where I anticipate and then capture. All right, so so now he's popping up. I think that was a crotch shot. No, that was me going wide angle to try and get it, but there's less light here. So those aren't going to be good. So I'm probably not going to shoot any pictures. Maybe one. Maybe I'll shoot one to see what it looks like. Nope, nope, because I'm like, why even shoot it? It's his back. So that's the thing that a lot of people need to learn is don't shoot just to shoot just because something's happening. If there is no light or it's too dark, it's not worth burning the film. Even though you're not using film, using the digital, it's not worth doing. So here I'm just waiting for something to happen. I'm like, do, 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 there's no light. There's no light. I'm not going to shoot. I'm not going to bump the ISO up higher because it's just going to add noise and add grain. So I just have to be patient and wait. There's been times where I've been in the pit and the band will come on to start playing and it will either be uh, it's like complete darkness and all I hear is click, 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 click. And I'm like, what are you, what are you guys shooting? Just out of curiosity, like what is actually being shot and nothing's going to be usable from it because there is no light. But it looks like I'm going to try it over here and you can see the extra noise that's there. The images, you can still pull out a shot. Look, I'm amazed that the color can pop out because... Yeah, that, that's all right. And he's not fully eating the microphone. It's not fully in his mouth because that's why I try to keep the angles the way that I keep them uh, so that, oh God, that's noise. You, you can see what happens, but 
that's what ISO 250 and it's still you know it, it holds up but not extremely well so I'm backing away because I want to I want to get a better angle not just straight up below him except watch this I'm probably gonna be right below him thank you move that yep move that thank you it's really good when they move the uh, the mic stand yeah see that's much better you get the crossed legs he's walking up the, the mic was down okay yep playing towards the camera probably should have been horizontal for that but not able to I didn't know he was gonna do that so here a lot of mic and mouth no mic and mouth mm, close but the composition and framing is good I mean, I, I challenge you guys to go out there with your iPhone and start shooting. It's not that I'm trying to say you should be shooting everything with an iPhone. I just think if all you have is an iPhone or any phone is that it's a great learning tool for helping you see composition because it doesn't matter whether you have a DSLR or the most expensive thing in the world. You just need to see composition because if you can get an eye for photography for the angles for the things that you want to capture then you're going to be able to translate that into the future when you get a dslr mirrorless or a micro four thirds camera and then the next thing to teach is the the exposure aspect so we're just moving through getting those shots uh and we should probably skip ahead to the next little section so this is the last time I went into the actual native app and then get tired, got tired real quick and popped out. Uh, I, I wanted to skip through to get to some of my favorite photos here because you don't really need to see me doing the same thing over and over. But I think the moral of the story so far is that it just looks great when you're using the raw capabilities and shooting DNGs out of Lightroom Mobile. Hey, 20% battery life, get out of here. Oh, I will say that that, that phone tremendous battery life if you're looking to upgrade to that or the iphone 10 this is not a sales plug or anything i'm just saying the battery life is much better um well hopefully they don't slow it down in the future so here it's just waiting there's a lot going on the lights are going starting to go nuts and i want to get those i want to i want to see if i can get into a groove and get the shots see this is where those horizontals worked out really well the exposure seems to be locked in pretty good now i'm just waiting to find the shot find the shot and and capture boom i missed it i missed i wasn't ready now nope, that's not as good but you can see the lights are looking great in the background i made them nice and contrasty i'll put up some of these raw files so you guys can download them over on the site and play with them yourself as well but i'm, I'm happy with what's going on here and these telephoto ones definitely not as good as those wide angle shots that were just popping up on the screen but the actually the contrast see that's good the contrast looks good the color looked all right uh, the black and white looked really good the way that it looked. Uh, so I'm happy with the results that I started to get there. See, it's, it's about finding that groove after a while. Now, some of you may not get to shoot a show for terribly too long. You may get three songs and out. Luckily, I know Gavin, so I'm able to shoot as much as I wanted from the pit. See, that color looks pretty good. Nice light on his face for the first time. Ooh, strong ass backlighting. But again, we're in manual. We're in pro mode in Lightroom Mobile, which makes for a better shot. Ooh, God, look how shaky, shaky, shaky. And stable because that lights now behind his head or it's starting to get there I'm moving I'm trying I can only get so low to get the photo that I need um, that's why you see a lot of movement I, I gotta I gotta play with the camera and actually sit below the stage and try to not get the stage in it see that's that's a little better not a good not a good ex expression on his face though not a good express. See now, yeah. See the glow happening. See how much better that is than having some of that. It's not bad to have some of the flare come through sometimes, but I want to get that solid, solid shot with the light straight behind him. Because look at the separation. We've got that nice rim light of blue happening right there. Um, finally, during the show. Now it's just waiting for the the good shot. Make sure that fo see the focus just keeps moving. Nope, nope, not as good, not as good not nope no good not a keeper and that's the thing you're gonna have a lot that aren't keepers throughout this shoot uh, and then Dan let's skip ahead again because there's a lot of nothing coming up so I just skipped a couple minutes because there were really no shots for a little bit because they just weren't going to be good so I didn't take them if they're not going to be good I don't take them now this is interesting because the light was not very good but I think the black and white worked out pretty well and we're basically in the last song coming up to the finale and this these shots not too good not too good but now you can see that the lights are starting to go nuts and I know that the show is going to end and I got to try and get some shots to finish it but again it's it's more of the same that's what happens in a show so sometimes three shots or less or uh, three songs is about all you need I shot more 
uh, and I actually did use my D5. I did take some photos with my D5 and then wanted to focus on making this video for you guys to see how we could do with the iPhone 8 Plus in a concert situation. And, and I think it was pretty good. I think what we learned was that the native app is good in some situations, but the quality of the images, the compression, the noise reduction that it does makes your images look really bad compared to using the same camera but just a different app and using the raw file, you can see that it looks much better. These shots are much cleaner than they would have ever have been if I was using the native iPhone app. So what we're gonna do now is I, I skipped around quite a bit through the photos and didn't really talk about my favorite ones and what I like, what I didn't like. So Dan and I are gonna reset here and then pop up a bunch of the images that I really liked and give you a little bit of insight and then we will wrap it all up as Gavin walks off the stage and I got that interesting lens flare. So I may have lied just a little bit. I'm not just gonna show you the best. I wanna make some comparisons here to, to make some points with the images as I was going through them. So the first image that you see on the screen is straight out of the iPhone camera. It, it was one of the first pictures that I took using the camera app. Look at the, the way that it handles the noise in the face. You see how it makes it all look a little smoother? It, it's not, you don't see the noise, you don't see the grain because it's it's using some kind of noise reduction to get rid of it. Uh, and I don't like it. Like you can even see it up in the cans in the top left hand corner where the lights are. Those are called cans and they just they just don't look that great. But again, for an iPhone, if you were just taking snapshots, be pretty good. But if you really want to get some interesting shots when you're at a concert, maybe think about using the Lightroom mobile. And this is another example with the iPhone um, using the camera app look at the exposure trying to bring this back i took this in to edit uh in lightroom you can tell that because i tried to bring back the highlights of the face and just look how blocky and and and, and blotchy things are it just it, it's not it's not that good uh, and i also wanted to show you on on the drummer's face you can see what's happening as it smooths it out it's not good but this one on the other hand with the with the iphone actually did a better job. I think I missed the focus. I think it's more focused on his chest and his jacket more than his face. But you can see this one did a better job with the exposure and with the 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 way that it handled everything. Uh, moving on to this, this one did not terribly too bad either. Um, so you can get it. It can happen. But actually, a lot of this seems to be back focused because look at the bass, the guy playing the bass in the back on the left, and look at the amp. They kind of look to be super duper sharp. Uh, opposed to the subject. Maybe that's just because the lighting's better. Uh, I don't think it's because I missed because I'm tapping on him the whole time to get him in focus, but it looks to be back focused. Um, pretty good. Not a great image in terms of the moment, but I just wanted to show you that you can do it with the iPhone. And even this one, the exposure is off, but I could bring I could bring this back in post-production in the JPEG because this one didn't apply as much smoothing. So what's actually happening is the camera is changing the exposure every time you're shooting it. It's making the decisions for you, then doing the processing, and then locking in the final results and throwing away all of that extra raw data. You can see it right here. Same thing in the face doesn't look tremendous. So now I want to jump to the pictures that I exported out of Lightroom taken in RAW. Right off the bat, you can see a major difference. Look how much you, you see the noise, you see the grain a little bit, but it's sharper, right? Because when you don't add noise reduction or any extra noise reduction in post-processing, it just has a sharper look and it just doesn't look watercolory. A lot of those other images look like watercolor images and they weren't good. Uh, this, I can't can't tell looks like there's some motion blur and and part of that is because remember when I shot at 180th 160th of a second and that's why I was jumping around for a lot of the show shooting at 1 3 20th 1 200th just in case something like this happened um, but this this is good look at that it, it if you show this to somebody and said was this done with an iPhone or a DSLR they may not be able to tell uh, maybe of course, there's some people that be like, yeah, it's definitely an iPhone, but the, for the most part, I don't think people would know the difference if they weren't sitting there looking at an entire show shot with a, a, a D5. And now that I'm looking at this image, I cut his feet off. I don't know if I like it as much, but no, the, the focus is up top. I'm happy with the colors. I don't mind the noise, the grain. You do get some blown out. Um, look, look at the what LED lights do to the back with those blue lights on the curtain. That's just LED lights. That's just what LED lights do. Uh, see, nice moment captured here. One of my favorite ones from it. Still looks like it's back focusing to the to the amp back there, um, and the bass 
uh, the, the the bass guitar, but just look at how the light is sh is shining behind him. It creates a nice separation. This is the type of shot you want to look for when you're doing concerts. How how does those, how do those lights look in the background? Black and white. This is a super strong black and white. I don't think you'd know that this was an iPhone shot if I didn't tell you that it was an iPhone shot either. And then I also want to show you that it's possible that your exposure is not going to work. I didn't freeze him here. Um, it just didn't work out. So even when you use the Lightroom mobile app, it's the same thing that can happen. If your exposure's wrong, if there's some action, if he's moving too fast, he can still end up with not keeper images. And again, when we bump that ISO up higher inside of the app, you can see the noise becomes more prevalent. It's not as good as what it was when I had the ISO lower, but then I ran the risk of getting things that were motion blurred because we didn't have a fast enough shutter speed because we used a faster ISO. So these are usable. They're, they're, they're keepers. They look good. Um, but there may be a little bit more noise that are, that's in them. So this horizontal, I really like. Good moment captured. He's not eating the microphone. It's not in his mouth blocking him. It's really not blocking the face. We got cool colors. We got the white lights that are, are, are shining through the image. And yeah, there's noise. Doesn't bother me doesn't bother me at all that it's there this is like hmm what's going on now this is a good one like that shot as well super noisy on this black and white i like his face i could probably add a little more contrast or some dehaze and bring this back a little more but remember we're working with an iphone file not the biggest file in the world not the largest megapixels in the world not the largest pixels in the world because the sensor is super duper small but I'm happy with the results. This was in a lower light area. You can definitely see the noise is more prevalent, but the shot still works. It's composed well. Um, there's the colors, they work. And the moment captured, it works. Uh, you know, I could be harsher if I really wanted, but taking into consideration that I'm using the iPhone, uh, I think it works. Really like the contrast on this. I went super heavy on it, and I still think it holds up and works well. Still looks like it's back focusing, but that could be infinite focus because you really don't have aperture control uh, with this camera. Same thing. That works. That were, uh, Yeah, I like that. I like that color. I like that look. Happy to be able to pull those files and the colors out. Same thing with this. Nice smile, some light behind him. Uh, and the standing one, I probably want to add a little more contrast, uh, but with the tweaking that I needed to do, I actually don't know that I like this image to start, but the more that I look at it, I like that the way that he's standing, you have a slight curve of the back and the piano is there um, and he's singing, he's got the light in his face and the lights behind him. I think that one works out pretty well as well. So that's a look at some of my favorite images. Also a look to break down some of the images that I didn't uh, like so much, but to show you the comparison between the iPhone doing all the work for you and then you doing the Lightroom mobile and then tweaking the files and then exporting them. And that's basically it. So I want to wrap it up right now. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed that challenge video using the iPhone 8 Plus. And one of the biggest takeaways is that if you're going to shoot something that's not uh, just a snapshot, or maybe in a low light situation or bad light situation, go into Lightroom Mobile or any other of the photo apps that let you shoot raw DNG because what you're able to do with the processing yourself looks so much better than what the iPhone is capable of doing with its native app. It just doesn't look as good in terms of color, in terms of clarity, in terms of tones. It just doesn't look as good letting the camera app do what it wants to do with the JPEGs. It's perfectly fine for snapshots and really good daylight but if you're not in good lighting and you want to do something with the files i highly recommend you shoot dng with it and i was pretty amazed with some of the quality i was able to pull out of this especially comparing it to the d5 shots that i took i'm going to do a separate video where i compare the d5 photos that i took with the photos from this 8 plus from Apple. So that's it guys. To check out some of the past videos, go ahead and click up on the screen right now. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. Let me know what you think about these challenge videos down below. Let me know what kind of challenges you have for me, and maybe I will go ahead out there and shoot it. That's it. Jared Poland, Fronosphoto.com. See ya. Subscribe now. Watch this, watch this video.